So, maybe you've heard Disney Plus has released a new series version of Turner and Hooch. Now, I've watched all of the episodes that have been released so far, and let me just say, I'm loving it. In fact, it's the series I'm most excited for each week, despite the fact that two of my favourite animes are currently coming out, those being The Versatile Mage and Moonlit Fantasy. I also feel I have to say, I hate animal movies in general. I can't tell you how many times I had to watch Free Willy when I was a kid. So as for the original Turner and Hooch, while I've seen the original movies, it's not like they hold any special place in my heart. But let's run the intro and get back to the TV series, Turner and Hooch. So, let's start at the beginning, not that we have much of a choice. At the time of writing, it is early August and there are only three episodes out so far. So what do we know about the story so far? Well, Turner is a marshal, the son of a small town cop who solved one big case. Turner moved to the big city to chase the big criminals. But when his father dies, he finds out he's been left a dog. A dog, a fact he isn't thrilled about. So where does it go from there? Well, as most series, there's small story arcs in each episode and a larger arc that runs throughout the series. Of course, while the small arcs do progress the story, there isn't much need to talk about them in detail as I don't want to ruin any of the episodes for you. But let me address them in a vague manner. Well, let's just start with the obvious points. Thankfully, it's well written and it certainly feels as though the characters are swept up in the story. It's well paced, but if I had to give one criticism, it's that each of the episodes had very high stakes. A mole high up in law enforcement, a large hostage situation with a diehard solution, and a dual thief on the most wanted list. While the high stakes may not seem like an issue, it doesn't give the series much space to grow. Either they'll go from big case to big case, cheapening the experience, or they'll have to tackle smaller cases, risking them seeming boring and inconsequential in comparison. Even the side characters have big catches. In episode 3, when Xavier goes to catch a 70-year-old Czech forger who walked off a prison camp, he ends up also bringing in an arsonist who was on the FBI Most Wanted list. And that all happened off-screen. Still, despite my doubts so far, each episode has had me glued to my screen. And I don't see that stopping anytime soon. But what about the overarching plot? The setup goes like this. Turner's sister finds a box of hidden files in the back of their father's late cupboard. Now these files are on a bunch of big criminals with seemingly no connection. Despite Turner's reasonable doubts that it will amount to anything, at his sister's insistence, they begin to look into it. Discovering his father's wristwatch on the side of a road and the whereabouts of one of the criminals. This storyline has a lot more time to go wrong and gives me pause. Despite what I would describe as fantastic writing so far, the only character I really dislike, both from a personal and an objective writing point of view, is the sister. She feels a little forced and barring any further character development, feels like she's more included to push the story forward than to be a character in her own right. I'd also put money on the fact that she's going to be kidnapped at some point in the series. But that's enough about the story. There's really only so much I can say about the series considering how early it is. Once it's completed, I'll almost certainly do a full review, so subscribe and make sure you don't miss it. And while you're at it, leave a like and comment. But onto the most important part of any series, the characters. The show is called Turner and Hooch, so it makes sense to start with them. So, Turner. Now, I've seen at least one review online complaining that Turner is a bad actor. Personally, I couldn't disagree more. Now, my standards for acting are rather low, and as long as it isn't in your face bad, I can't say it bothers me too much. But that's not what's happening with this. Maybe it's just me, but I decided Turner had OCD long before Hooch was ever introduced. This isn't just a projection on my part. Check out the apartment shown in the beginning of the first episode. Now, while I haven't really addressed it so far, I definitely think that's them doing it intentionally and not just something in my head. But there's an argument against it if you can call it that. Uh, Scott, this is Curtis, my brother. He helps with training here. Oh, that's awesome. 
Nice meeting you. Curtis is autistic. And you're neurotypical. I can tell. That's okay. Thanks. <laughs> Still, certainly gives a bit of a monk feel, and while his OCD is obviously not on the same level, it changes the way he acts, thus the way the actor would act when playing him. And I think this is what the reviewers saw and mistook for bad acting, but hey, that's just my opinion. Now, as I said, as a general rule, I'm not a fan of animal movies, so I'll keep my segment on Hooch short. In fact, I don't really have anything to say. I guess if you can call it acting, it's quite good. I truly believe he's a dog. He also acts as you would imagine Hooch would act, at least so far. He's been a great movie dog. Still, it's not just Turner and Hooch. So far, the next biggest character has been Turner's very pregnant partner, who was put on desk duty at the end of episode 3. Now, those of you paying attention may remember there are only three episodes out so far. So despite the fact I really like her character and there's good chemistry between her and Turner, the question becomes how big a role will she play in the rest of the series? Will she help him from the office or fade into the background? Maybe they'll even skip to a point after her pregnancy and when she's back on the job. But she's not the only character to consider. We also have the captain, Z-Squad, a group of marshals in a boys club type group whose Turner was trying to get in with when his partner went off duty. And of course the love interest, which so far is the dog trainer, Erica. But there was a surprise introduction at the end of episode 3 with a possible competitor who will almost certainly take centre stage while we all root for a good old Erica. There's also his sister, her son and Xavier, a free-spirited marshal who does his own thing, who Turner is quite likely to pair up with the upcoming episodes. Of these characters, the Captain and Z-Squad are more like background characters, whereas the dog trainer Erica, the sister and Xavier will likely play much larger parts. I once again don't have any complaints about any of the acting, and I truly wish I did just to give this video a bit of controversy. So to kind of summarise, I like the story and the characters, but I have doubts about how the story will progress. I really hope the sister will be kidnapped or almost shot at some point, or something of that ilk that will scare her back into the path of being a veterinarian like their mother, who really gets next to no screen time at all. But until that happens, she's likely to be around in an awkward third wheel kind of way to the main duo. I suppose just to absolutely bare bones summarise my position, I love the first three episodes and have high hopes for the rest of the series. And I really do think this is worth a watch if you haven't seen it yet. Now something I haven't explicitly mentioned so far is that this is being made by Disney Plus, which is to say that's the only place you can watch it. But I'm sure most of you out there have a friend with it, or can get a free trial, maybe some other way of seeing it, wink wink. But if you do like it, do support it. The only way you get good TV is to support it when it comes out and to avoid the bad stuff. But until next time, I've been Alexander and this has been Should You Watch Turner and Hooch.